Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, but I'm the I'm the current director of the um, the geospatial data analysis uh, master's program, which is uh, really just a, a, a GIS, a geographic information science and remote sensing program. Just got a little fancy name for it. I'm going to talk to you today uh, a little bit about um, yeah why UCD um, why it should be you know at the top of your list of of master's programs um, and uh, yeah what's interesting about uh, the School of Geography here at UCD. And then I'll hand it over to um, Owen and Wayne to tell you about their experiences currently and in the past in the, in the program. Um, so, yeah, you, uh, um, the School of Geography sits inside the UCD College of Social Sciences and Law here at UCD. Um, you know, located in Ireland. If if you're not currently in Ireland, you haven't been to Ireland. Why why would you want to come here? Well, Ireland is a is primarily an English speaking country. It's uh, it's friendly. It's safe. Um, it's also one of the fastest growing economies in the world, and it's the fastest in the EU as of, as of last year. Um, it's highly con the the economy is highly concentrated in, around technology. <clears throat> so Ireland is the hub for all the big tech companies right now, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, right? And we got a lot of pharmaceutical and, and a lot of the downstream effects of, of these big uh, multinational tech companies here, right? And a lot of opportunities to work either directly for them or um, tangentially. Um, why Dublin? Well, um, it's got a young urban right, professional population. Um, there's a ton of financial institutes that are also hosted here. And it's got close proximity to, to the beaches, um, to the mountains on the island. And um, it's got the largest urban park, Phoenix Park in all of Europe. Um, and it's got a really vibrant uh, music and art scene, theater and, and arts here. Uh, UCD, it's, uh, it's an old university founded in 1854. Uh, it's got a lot of subjects that are in the top 100 programs, including geography now. Um, and it's got a big student body. It's a very large university, 30, about 38,000 students, undergraduate and postgraduate students, thousands of staff, uh, researchers, and, and other folks on campus. It's like its own little, little town or city. It's the largest urban uh, campus in Europe, 350 acres. It's massively sprawling. It's, it's got some beautiful uh, uh, facilities and, and natu a natural uh, environment uh, still within the, the, the campus. And it's got a plethora of um, excellent student facilities, um, over 150 clubs and societies across campus. Um, it's got the largest and most international um, uh, student body. Uh, and I think this is important when you're looking at, at universities. If you want to go to a big university, I went to big universities during, during my studies. Um, one of the, the, the big draws of the big university and one of the benefits of it is there's so many opportunities. There's opportunities to do lots of different things. Um, if you are, you know, a little bit more on the extrovert side, right, you've got all of these opportunities to interact with uh, different organizations, but also even if you even if you pick geography as uh, as your focus, there's still opportunities to take modules in other other schools uh, across the college um, and to be exposed to different research and other types of career opportunities um, that <clears throat> aren't necessarily uh, you would consider traditional geography, but they intersect with with other um, interests and domains. So the School of Geography itself. Uh, in the master's program, we have uh, five different programs. So we've got the geospatial data analysis, which I'll speak mostly to because that, that's what I know of. Uh, but we also have the MA in geopolitics and the global economy. So Owen here will, will talk more about that. Uh, we've got an MA in geography. We've got an MSc in critical geographies and an MSc in risk resilience and sustainability. The geopolitics and the global economy uh, is, is about that. It's about geopolitics. Um, uh, uh, Professor Alan Jones really leads this and um, really going to expose you to uh, past and current and potentially future uh, geopolitical um, uh, issues and developments. Um, there are some amazing field trips. He conducts one to Brussels where you get to go to the UN and you get to interact with uh, diplomats and politicians there. Uh, and it's, a, it's a great program and it's a big program too. I think there's uh, on average 10, 15 uh, students in the program every year. Then there's the MA in geography. So that's a more traditional uh, focusing on on uh, geographic topics of your choice, uh, working with with somebody, um, you'll end up doing a dissertation for for most of these, and you'll be working in the MA 
uh, yeah, with uh, with an advisor, focus more on a traditional uh, geographic topic. There, we also have the Critical Geographies Program uh, led by Professor Kath Brown, and this is much more uh, uh, looking at um, inequalities, power structures, and dynamics. Uh, doing work, uh, you could potentially do be doing work around. Um, uh, issues affecting uh, marginalized groups, uh, uh, issues affecting uh, LGBT populations, and and such, uh, but from a critical perspective, looking at the institutional and the systemic uh, causes for for these issues and how to overcome them, and then there's the MSC and risk resilience and sustainability, and that's more um, what we call more of a physical geography uh, a program. That's it incorporates a lot of field work. You'll be working with uh, uh, geographers and environmental scientists at um, the the natural environment. Um, streams and waterways, coastal areas, looking at uh, environmental assessment strategies, sustainability uh, development goals, and, and the like. But today, I'm really going to focus on the um, on the the uh, geospatial data analysis program. So this is this is more about uh, uh, methods, learning methods, and applying those methods to to practical and real world problems. And these methods are ultimately spatial, and we use GIS, so geographic information science, and remote sensing. Uh, remote sensing is is when we collect information from remote locations, so satellite imagery, sensor locations, and, and such. Um, it's really, really about those methods. It's the heart of it is learning and becoming an expert in those methods with, over the course of the year, and then again applying those to to some sort of real world problem. That's really where you get um, that next stage that goes beyond the undergraduate program of just learning techniques. Right now, we're really applying them to a specific problem and usually a new problem, and that's through your dissertation or through a project. Uh, the core modules or core classes that you'll be taking are um, going to be GIS focused. So we've got an introduction to GIS in the autumn along with the remote sensing. And uh, then that rolls into the spring we, where we have an advanced GIS um, and some physical um, geography courses that you can take as optional. We have a new course, which, uh, which I'm leading, which is um, geostatistics and programming in GIS, which will also be a core mandatory course for that. So you get more, more programming skills, which um, is needed more for um, industry now, especially with, with GIS. And it's also coupled with real world learning experiences. So embedded in the courses themselves, are applications with real world data, working on real world problems. Um, we also have uh, field trips that I'll talk about in a minute, but all using things like drones, right? Getting hands-on experience. Um, and then you'll have your dissertation or your project um, throughout the year. And that's something you work with uh, with your, your supervisor. Um, with remote sensing, right? The applications are really limitless. Um, we're using remote sensing now because the high quality data that we can collect from afar um, for transportation planning, for urban planning, for um, evaluating um, <clears throat> our human impact on the environment, uh, trying to attain SDG, you know, the goals that are set by the UN and the world, right, in, in terms of sustainability. We can look at crop health analysis, right? Yield estimation. There's so many applications now with remote sensing and using sensors, smart cities, all of this stuff. And that's that, that's what we include and embed in some of the, the courses that we teach in, in, in the GIS and remote sensing programs. Um, the GIS itself is, it's a, it's a computer system, computer science, where uh, you bring in spatial data and this data can come from, from diverse, uh, can come from satellite imagery, but it can also be data that you collect throughout the program yourself. It could be interviews and surveys that, that you collect. Um, and ge geographic information systems, they bring all this data together. And so we can map it and we can analyze it spatially. Um, and it's becoming much more and more important. Um, these skills translate not only into direct research applications, but for example, you look at any, um, any uh, um, journal, or a newspaper today, and they've got maps, right? You look at the cover of the New York Times, there's always a map now. COVID outbreaks, right? Maps of conflicts, um, also maps of, you know, um, uh, you know, where artists play, right? Musicians play. Uh, there's, there's, it's, it's limitless and what, what we can do with mapping today. At the end of the, um, the one year top masters is a dissertation. Now we're changing that slightly for this year. Uh, we're going to introduce a project base. So there'll be other options besides just the dissertation. But traditionally, you do a dissertation. That's where you work one on one and you will uh, work 
uh, on a specific problem. It's going to be a new problem. It may not be, you know, earth shattering and groundbreaking, but it's something new that hasn't been done before. And you are going to be involved with data collection and the data analysis using the GIS methods um, that, that you that you learned throughout the year. Um, uh, that being said, we're that is a very formal process where you publish a, a dissertation. It's a very long and it's a very intense uh, uh, practice right, where you really get to learn how to conduct uh, very rigorous research in terms of conducting literature reviews and um, uh, uh, developing your methods and a formal analysis and write up of, of those methods in, in the dissertation. Now, switching over to a more project oriented um, uh, goal doesn't mean it's not as rigorous. It's just that, that that project could be linked to other things. So you could have, potentially have an internship, which I'll talk about in a minute. There's opportunities for that through the program or something from industry. Say you are currently working somewhere. You can bring in the uh, the work that you, you may be doing uh, through industry into a, uh, a more uh, uh, research-based uh, approach with um, with supervision from one of us and, and our expertise. Um, and so that can be another option. Again, the ultimate goal of all of this is to have an impact. It's to, to prepare you all for uh, for going out into the world and solving a lot of the, you know, these big real world pressing issues with GIS and remote and remote sensing skills that you learn throughout the years. So again, it, urban planning, right, environmental health, migration, geopolitics, all of this stuff gets tied into uh, uh, spatial analysis. Um, and there's some of the projects that we have currently going on. Um, there's some big um, uh, European-wide projects. We have international collaborations, so you can get the opportunity, depending on, on your supervisor, to work with folks um, uh, either here in Ireland or abroad. Um, and our past, and I won't talk too much of this because we've got uh, Wayne here, um, but there are career opportunities. We have internships, um, uh, formal internship programs with groups like KPMG, um, ESRI, and other organizations. And a lot of the students have um, found employment through some of these um, international organizations, but also here in Ireland. So the Central Stats Office, so uh, alumni from the program work there, which is the Irish uh, Statistical Office and the Irish uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Um, yeah, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hand it off, I think, to Owen. Um, I'm not gonna go over too much of the, the rest here in, in terms of time. Uh, but Owen is a current student in our geopolitics and global economy, and hopefully he can give you some more information about um, that program. Thanks. So thank you, Jeremy. So my name is Owen, and I am a current student in the MA of geopolitics and the global economy. So beginning with why I chose UCD, I did my undergrad at UCD, so it was an easy step for me to take. but I had initially decided that I was going to go to the UK to do a master's, but I then decided to stay in Ireland, but I wanted to so I branch out and see what was out there. So I looked at masters in Cork, Galway, Belfast, Trinity, but I found one that my experience at UCD had been very good, like in terms of the facilities, the campus as a whole, the societies and the staff. But I also found that the masters on offer in UCD were just a bit more interesting. And there was, was a lot of variety I found compared to other colleges. So I was I decided to stick with UCD. So I had studied pure economics here as an undergrad. But I didn't really want to follow sort of the path that a lot of um, people in my course had followed, which was into like the big four, into finance, or into sort of very quantitative masters in economics and finance and Smurfit and things like that, because I'd always aim to like focus my research as an undergrad on particular aspects of economics. So I was very interested in like international economics and political economy, economic history. So I always wanted to do modules and research that could let me focus on this. And my electives always focus on this. So they were always history and politics, for example. So in looking at masters in UCD, I considered masters in international political economy, in Middle Eastern studies, in development studies. But the one that really stood out to me was the um this masters in geopolitics. Like one the the name really just stuck out to me when I first saw it, and then looking at it, 
it seemed like the masters that could allow me to pursue my interests under like an overarching very interesting program and having been in the masters now since uh, September I could say that that has been the case so I have found the masters to be very interesting and very um fulfilling in terms of what I'm interested in um so in terms of module content like you do your thesis obviously throughout both semesters you'll have a module on for research design in both semesters and then you work on your thesis through the summer but in first semester there's more focus on like different modules you could take so sort of the main one for geopolitics is with professor alan jones it's a critical geopolitics and diplomacy and this was a very interesting module it really sort of challenges the way you probably think about geopolitics i think it for me anyway I really approached it from a different angle sort of this very everyday geopolitics which you might find represented in the media but it then helps you to be critical of these things and really sort of decipher them and that was very useful for like our thesis and our field work as i will get on to in a minute but then in terms of other modules i took one that i really really enjoyed was a uh, development in the global south which was a module I took in um, first semester. So it was a quite a critical module. It involved sort of taking notions of development and ideas of the global south against the global north. But what I found really interesting about it was the coursework as a latest like, independence that I've been seeking and doing a postgrad. So we just had to pick a setting in the global south and talk about it and like, argue a certain angle. And I was able to look at Venezuela through sort of it historical political economy angle which sort of like really tied into what I love doing in an undergrad and it fit perfectly into this master's and then obviously it was interesting seeing what other people did because everybody was different everybody was picking different angles but they all perfectly fit into the course that we were doing which was quite fulfilling and likewise I was able to do um modules from other schools so I was able to do modules from the school of American studies and it to do with America's foreign policy in the Middle East. And I'm currently doing a module in international political economy from the School of Politics. And these fit in really well to what I was aiming to do. But there's so many other options. So if you're into like human rights, European politics, they're also offered. But also if you want to do something more, if you're from a geography background, it's very easy to mix sort of this geospatial end of it with the geopolitics end. And I know people who are doing that quite effectively for their thesis they're sort of taking these practical skills they picked up in like GIS and applying it to sort of the issues of geopolitics which is quite interesting so if that's what you're into it's very easy to do that in this course and um, another important part of me choosing this was the opportunity for field work that we did in Brussels just a few weeks ago and that was a really really important to me I think because how did sort of step away from your academia end of studying your postgrad and actually use your skills in the real world? And it was interesting because we had done our module with Alan Jones on critical geopolitics. And when we got to Brussels, we really saw the, the usefulness of this. We were able to apply what we had learned with these real actors in geopolitics. And it was a steep learning curve, like it was a tiring and tough week, but a week I really took a lot out of and I think that this practical experience is something that you can really build on so I'm looking to after graduation you can you have an eye into the world of diplomacy and how it actually works because it could be hard to access otherwise like probably nearly impossible at times um, and this week was really beneficial in terms of the teamwork I think that's an important aspect of any postgrad is teamwork but I found teamwork a postgrad level to be a lot easier than undergrad because I think everybody's on the same page when they're in a postgrad you know we're, we're all everyone in my course are there for similar reasons it's something they're interested in something they want to pursue so doing the teamwork and in in field work was really um important and obviously when you have such a diverse group like there's 14 people in our course but only about half of them are from Ireland and so just seeing these different worldviews all to come together into one course is really interesting um and in terms of like 
supports and like opportunities for graduate students in UCD. I think one of the most important aspects of doing a postgrad is the dynamic between you and your teachers really changes. So as an undergrad, you're lectured, um, but I think your classes as, as post as a postgrad become much more like a discussion because you have you're forced to develop a relationship with your lecturers. And this is a really good thing because you'll just end up learning so much more. And it's there and it's easy to make use of. So because there I feel I've found are very willing to listen to what we have to say. Um you know, the interest in our research and you know, you have this opportunity to pick the brains of somebody who is an expert in their field that, you know, you should have a, a similar interest in. So that's been the case in my for my thesis. Like I've been given access to somebody who's devoting their career to the topic I'm studying. Like that's not something that you're always going to have the opportunity to do. And it's just been really fulfilling to be able to like just hear what they have to say, but then also like really encouraging because they're list they're willing to listen to what I have to say. And I found this, that to be brilliant. And building on the relationships you have with your lecturers is so sort of looking towards graduation. The lecturers have been like fantastic in pointing us in the right directions of giving us like notice of like internships in the EU, of internships in different embassies around Europe. And also they've been proactive and so sort and of letting us know of PhD opportunities, not only in UCD, but in different universities in Ireland. So like they're always thinking about their students in that sense, like, and they're always open to help us. Like if in terms of reference or even just general advice about study or about what you want to do next year, they've been brilliant in helping us and pointing us in the right direction. Like it's still up to us obviously, but there's places I would not have been able to find, like I'm not being able to look so easily where they like lecturers telling us about it. And as for me, like I'm not, I don't have anything concrete for next year, but I'm looking into like internships in the EU and the UN currently. Um, my main focus at the moment is finishing this semester and doing my thesis, which has been an enjoyable process. But um, if I could recommend this program, like in one sentence, like why I would do it, I think the variety and independence that has given me academically has been the most important part. I think that's all I have to say. So thank you. Thanks, Owen. Um, I'll hand it off to, to Wayne. Wayne uh, uh, completed um, the master's in geospatial data analysis last year, and now he's working um, full time right, using those skills. Thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Wayne. And as Jeremy just said, I completed the geospatial data analysis and remote sensing program just last year. Um, Jeremy kind of actually said quite a lot about the program. But um, like Owen, I, I originally done my undergrad at UCD. Um, I think UCD's reputation really drew me to it. Um, it's consistently named as one of Ireland's most hireable universities, uh, consistently ranks high globally in the university rankings, and uh, the facilities and support, and it, particularly the in international community actually was something that, that that drew me to the university. UCD is, is known to be Ireland's um, international university. Uh, I think the, the location in Dublin, in the capital city, where a lot of things are happening, uh, there's so much happening in Dublin at, at, at the moment and that was another another reason that that drew me to university but um by the time I got to, to my master's degree I, I think I knew the university quite well and I knew the the, the program that I, I wanted to take and um, I knew what direction I wanted to go in terms of my career path and UCD had all the answers for me in that in that sense um so I I, I discovered um GIS during my my undergrad and um, there are some classes that you can take for GIS during uh, during undergrad doing geography um, and it intrigued me and caught my attention and uh, my interest was was 
I suppose chap chaperoned by the, by the staff there who encouraged my curiosity in the in the skill and introduced me then later to the master's program, which uh, really cemented my interest in, in doing the ma master's at UCD. I, I did look at other universities also, but UCD coming from a place that I knew very well, I, I knew the I knew that the standards were high. I knew everything about it, the supports and facilities. I, I knew that it was a, a good place to 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 really to really go back to fulfill my my graduate uh, degree. Um, the program itself, um, well, it, it, it's 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 a very uh, it's a thought program based on honing a set of skills, and and the and the program is excellent at doing that. It's very engaging. It's very practical. There's a lot of uh, hands-on experience. Um, you you have uh, you have opportunities to use these skills in various different modules that reflect your your desired career path, whether that be consultancy, government departments, industry consultancy, etc. Um, yeah, GS can really be applied to an incredible diverse amount of applications and analysis. The, the the assignments within the 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 program were were excellent. They they reflected real world scenarios that would be experienced in the workplace. And as someone who is now working in the workplace, I I can I can honestly say that they re have really helped me in uh, the workplace environment. But but they also add uh, elements of problem solving uh, to use your. Uh, they encourage you to use your initiative and critical thinking, something that the, the, the staff in UCD is, is always encouraging. Um, there was also several opportunities for field work in the program, including, uh, I, I think Jeremy already covered this as well, in, including a research trip out to sea off the west coast of Ireland. Uh, there was a trip to, I, I, I think it was Mozambique last year as well, and another trip to London. I myself went on the, the trip to London, which was um, focused on uh, how a city works and the metabolism of a city. Very interesting trip altogether. Um, my the I, th I focused my thesis on um, during my my graduate program um, of studying the effects of long commuting and student mental health, which I incorporated, of course, the skills I used in like, my GAS skills. Um, that I learned during the program, and which Jeremy actually uh, supervised for me. Um, academic supports in in UCD is excellent, particularly during the thesis process. Who, as I mentioned, uh, the Jeremy's uh, the insights of Jeremy are, were, were really val valuable and encouraged me to do better. Uh, and I, and also, as Owen mentioned, the dynamic during a master's uh, degree between students and staff is really interesting. It's, it's really, it's a real developed um, relationship. It's, it's, it's more of an intellectual, so you're, you're more of on a, on a level term with the, with, with a, with a professor than you are when you're, when you're doing your, your undergrad. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, absolutely excellent. Um, dynamic between the staff and students there. The first question um, is for for um, a, a candidate for the MSc in geospatial data analysis. And they're asking, they're saying they want to work in the IT industry. And they're asking, what's the percentage of students who have secured a job in the IT industry who took this course? Or, or I guess what's, uh, to open out the question, What's the balance um, or the spread of where students end up? What where, what sectors students end up working in? Please. Every year we have a student go off to KPMG. We've got um, regular connections with Esri and um, uh, yeah Malone Technology, right? Wayne, I think there's been uh, previous um, uh, alumni that are working there or have worked there before. Um, yeah, there's a couple of people in in modern technology from the program. Okay, thank you. And then the next question is, how much of the course content in geospatial data analysis emphasizes on the data science and analytics aspect of the subject? And the question again is, is geostatistics and programming for GIS a core module? Yes, now now that, that course is now a core module. Uh, <clears throat> there used to be 
there used to be another another a research design module which we're going to move to an option it'll be an option and then the geostatistics and programming is now going to be a core um so yeah it's going to be much more heavily uh involved in in what yeah spatial data science and spatial data analytics i mean that is the core of 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 the program itself is the analysis of the data but um now we're bringing in more programming and more of that you know what what you call data science into it so more statistics um and um yeah um uh, i think it it'll, it'll complement um some of those more um computer science pathways Thank you. The next question is around uh, funding support. And the question is, is there financial support for field work or is it self-funded by the student? I believe most of the field work is self-funded by the student. Um, Wayne, I don't, was there any, did you receive any funding for? Um, I, I think it's uh, specific to the field work that you go on. Um, I believe for, for last year, for the trip to Mozambique, there was some supports for that, but there was limited positions. Um, there was also, I, th I think that the trip to Cork for to, to, for the, the, the trip out at sea, I believe that was self-funded. And the trip to London, which I went on, that was self-funded. So it, it depends on the... Uh, the research trip that you the field trip that you you plan to go on thanks so the info the 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 sea field trip that wayne is is talking about we every year we run a a trip out uh, across the irish sea it's um i think it's a three day trip and um yeah and what you end up doing is you end up going out on a boat you end up going out on a ship and you'll be doing data collection so there will they'll be mapping the seabed for. And so you'll be involved with that that data collection and the analysis afterwards. Um, there's a limited number of slots, I think, for that. Um, but um, yeah, but we run that every year. Thank you. The next question is around uh, student group numbers. So how many students are typically in the risk resilience and sustainability masters every year? Um, and are most of those students full-time or are they part-time? Uh, mo so most students across all the programs are, are full-time. There are a couple part-time students. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, the, the classes, the modules that we teach are during working hours. Um, and so you have to be able to juggle that right with your employment if, if you're thinking about a, a, a part-time position, right? You have to get off take off time from work if you're working a you know a nine to five um, to take the the classes. The risk and resilience is usually around I think five five students a year. Thank you, Jeremy. And Jeremy, I think this uh, question is probably directly for you as well. Is it okay to cold email researchers within the department about the possibility to work with them in their current research? Um yeah, I mean, yeah, once you're in the program, sure. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I think we're all, we all have a open door policy and, you know, we want to work with um, students who are interested, engaged, right, with what we're doing. Absolutely. And there's always opportunities. I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's different there's different levels of you know of doing research right there's you know if you're doing the phd it's obviously going to be much more involved than if you're doing master's research and if you're, if you're just being an assistant right coming in to to help out as an assistant right there could be various opportunities and different levels of commitment okay thank you and the next question then um it's around credits so for geospatial data analysis how many credits are available for optional modules or are they all core so you have you've got um you've got 60 credits that are uh that are for um for modules that are for courses and of those 40 of them are core and those are mandatory and the, they are intro to gis remote sensing um uh, geostatistics and programming and advanced GIS. 